Good afternoon, YouTube family. It's the first day of the 12 days of candy with Grammy Nene. I'm so glad you guys are watching and tuning in. If you could give me a like, a share, and a subscribe, I would be greatly appreciative of it. Um, I'm so excited because it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's been looking like Christmas for quite a while here because I celebrate Hollow Thanks of Christmas. When it's Halloween, I put a few little decorations out. And when Halloween's gone, I have a little bit of Thanksgiving and a whole lot of Christmas. And slowly Thanksgiving gets put away and more and more Christmas comes out. I've just always been in love with Christmas. I remember one time whenever I was eight years old, I felt like my parents were taking too long to get the Christmas tree. And I got home from school before then when I was probably about nine, really. And when my mom came home about an hour and a half after I was home, I had an aunt that lived next door. I had already went out to the shed and drug everything in and put up that Christmas tree by myself. My mom was mildly impressed, but I forgot to put lights on it. <laughs> I forgot to put the lights on it, so we had to take everything back off and redecorate it and put the lights on there. But anyway, it's a cute little story about Grammy Nene. All right, candy number one is a crock pot candy. Uh, I can't take credit for this. This is something that I found on YouTube. Um, it's delicious. And uh, I've made it probably for the last three years. And it's the first thing that my husband asked for. It's one of his favorite. So without further ado, let's move over here. And I'm going to show you guys how to make it. And I hope you guys have been having a blessed day. I'm having a blessed day. It's going to start with a crock pot. And I've got the crock pot heated a little bit. Let's move this over here. Okay, the first thing that's going to go into it, let me get some scissors because that will make it easier for me on opening things. We're going to add a whole bag of semi-sweet. Well, these aren't semi-sweet. These are just chocolate chips. I'm going to tell you, I couldn't find semi-sweet chips, so I just had to go with the regular one. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, I have a bag of dark chocolate chips. I was going to tell y'all something right now. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, uh, that, 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 that ain't going to hurt nothing. I need them uh, for later. Okay. Let's add this dark chips in here. All except for 20. We ain't telling nobody. Y'all, my friends, y'all ain't telling nobody. Now, we got one of these jars of lightly salted. I don't like it when it's fully salted. I like the lightly salted, but if you like it to be really salty, you can add the full salt in there yourself. It's your choice and what you like. We're going to add this whole. Woo wee! Ain't that looking good? Now, this is where it gets really good. I am going to add a whole sleeve of this. The almond bar to it. I'm just gonna put them all in there like that. And you're gonna take this lid and you're gonna put that on top of there. And then that's gonna cook. I'll, I'm gonna let it cook for an hour and then I'm gonna come back and check it. So looking at the time, I will meet you back in this kitchen in an hour. And we're gonna stir it. We're gonna see how much longer it needs to go. I shall be back in just a few minutes. And uh, y'all didn't see nothing. All right. Okay, the candy's in the crock pot. And it's melting away. And that's basically all you do with this candy is just allow it time to kind of melt to where you can stir it all together. And we're going to spoon it out. And I'm going to show you all of that. But I wanted to show you some of the candy haul that I've got because... In order to make this amount of candy, of course, I'm doing it for gifts and for loved ones and for friends and for neighbors. And so you have to have containers that don't cost a whole lot of money that you can give away and, you know, uh, put the candy in and make it festive. You have to be festive. It's Christmas time. Christmas time. Okay. But I want to tell you how we got into make, how making candy became a tradition in our family. Um... My Granny Newman, which is my biological dad's side of the family, and my Aunt Della, 
are were very traditional people. They both gone on to be with the Lord. And every year we had the same food, the same pies, and we made candy. Thanksgiving would happen, and the day after Thanksgiving, we would pull everything out and we would make candy. We made candy that were different colors on the inside. She had all of the flavorings to make peppermint uh, creams. You name it, we made everything. But the number one candy that I learned how to make and I love is peanut butter balls. Um, let's see what else. Coconut bonbons. I'm trying to think of all the other things that we make. Divinity. Some of those are just like the best delicious stuff that we made. Divinity is not one of my favorite, but I make it because it's tradition. So I'm going to share that with you. And it's just a special time. And when I make those, I really think about them because it was a family affair. We all got around the table and we laughed and we had such a wonderful time. And You know, that's the one thing about uh, memories is that when you lose somebody, you never lose the memories. They're always with you. And so, but my mother wasn't a traditional person for Christmas. And she gave us a wonderful Christmas every year and I can't ever fault her. But my mother was raised very poor. She never had a Christmas tree. She never got a Christmas present unless that there was a couple years that the Goodwill truck would come by and she could pick something off the Goodwill truck. And when she was 15 years old, the Goodwill truck came by and she chose this zebra pillow that I have here in my hand. And that was her very own Christmas present. And a few years ago, she told me she wanted me to have it and she gave it to me. And it's a cherished gift. It's just a square little pillow. My mom is 65 years old. So this pillow is 50 years old. She's almost 66, but this pillow is cherished and I love it. And it's, it stays on a guest bedroom and I have a zebra lamp that kind of goes along with it and pulls it out with the motif of the room. And I will never, I will never get rid of it. I love it. So I never knew a Christmas when I was a kid where I got a pillow off of a Goodwill truck. My mother is a good mom, but we are so blessed and we are so we are blessed with so many things. We all have so many things. I mean, just look around my kitchen. I mean, I have just on this wall, six pictures probably. You know, are materialistic, we are blessed. But the best memories of Christmas are the memories of the family, of gathering. And that's what I want my kids to have. That's why I try to continue the, the candy making. As of right now, my kids are not really into making candy, but they are into eating it. So as long as they'll eat it, old mom will fix it for them. So now let me show you my hauls that I've got. So uh, I need something that's fairly big because the amount of candy that I make and give away, it's a different kind. And I found these beautiful Joy Totes. And of course, it's probably gonna be backwards to you, but that is not Yog, that is Joy, J-O-Y. It does look like Yog in the camera though. So I might be able to fix that. But these were $3. And I tell you, even if you weren't making candy, these would be good to keep flour in. Because they seal. They seal down. And see, they're fairly deep. And they're just really festive. But you could store stuff in these. That would be, Betsy, $3. And then I found these adorable gift bags. These candy bags that they have. And they're a dollar. And I think there's five in, it, in there. And it says... Mistletoe Kisses and Candy Cane Wishes on there. Isn't that adorable? And then have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And of course, it's got the red truck on it. And I'm in love with the red truck this year. And then I got May Your Holiday Be Filled with Lots of Cookies. Now, I'm not putting cookies in here. But you know what? When somebody opens this bag up, they ain't going to be disappointed that it ain't got cookies in it. Because it's going to have some delicious candy. And that's kind of my candy haul stuff. But I wanted to show you one other thing, one other idea. My little girl, even though she's 13, she does a countdown every year. It's like a tradition for us that she has the cardboard countdown and she opens it. She gets a different candy every night. Every The last couple of years we've been kind of disappointed because we always like the ones that have different shapes. But the last couple of years she's had one that had the same candy every night. It wasn't anything different. So I found this at Dollar, Dollar General. I'm going to turn you around. And you'll see all of my candy making stuff on the table. Hello. Hello. My camera popped out of the thing. Okay. But I found this at Dollar General. 
and it's a Christmas countdown. They had many different kinds of them. I'd say about four different varieties, but of course I got the red truck and that looks like my little dog Lacey's riding in the front. And it's 19 days tomorrow because this is when I'll be releasing the video tomorrow. And it's the days till Christmas. And I got this. And I believe this was $5 and has the little stand on the back so you can stand it up. And then I found this little cookie jar. But what I did is I filled it full of Hershey Kisses and every night and these are sugar kiss sugar cookie Hershey Kisses it smells wonderful I wish you guys could smell it but that's my little my little thing and from now on since she's gotten big enough as you can open this without breaking it she'll change the countdown and she'll get her a Hershey Kiss every night and so will mama but we ain't gonna tell nobody I'll probably go in there in the morning and the evening and get one these are good. So, anyway, I thought I would share that with you. Because you can find some wonderful things at Dollar General. You can find some wonderful things at Dollar Tree. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. But these were the size I needed. And three dollars. And uh, you're going to have to have some things to store the candy. Now, underneath my Christmas trees, I have lots of tins. And I save my tins. And those are what I put the candy for my house in. They don't leave their special tins. I've had them, some of them for, oh, I probably had a couple of those in there probably for 15, 16 years for a while. And so that's where I put my, my candies, like I say, for us. And I usually will set them over there once I start making candies and they can just come in and open them. But the stuff that I have on the table is can't for people that I'm making candy for. I'll make my brother and my sister-in-law a big batch of candy and mail it up to East Tennessee. And I usually make my sister-in-law and my father-in-law and my uh, youngest brother-in-law and all my nieces a batch for their house. I don't know. Anybody that wants candy, I will make it for them. Anyway, y'all have a, y'all just wait around and we'll be back in just a minute. I forgot what I was doing. I thought I was in in the video, but we still got to wait on this candy to get done and it'll take a little while to melt. I'll be back in a few. We're back and it's been an hour and we're just going to go over here and check this. So I'm going to turn you guys around over here where you can see what is going on let's pull y'all around a little bit i might be able to pull i ate all them chocolates but we ain't we don't even talk about that okay so if you can look in here everything you can see these are melted now you're just gonna stir this all up and it only takes about an hour and i think it's pretty much done look at that i'm kind of you're just blending all of those chocolates together so good. It's going to be so delicious. Let's get it all put in there. Now the next part is going to be parchment paper and screening help. You really want to get this all mixed up. It didn't take a whole lot of time to make this. And it this makes a good bit. You can do a double batch if you want to. But when I do multiple candies, this will be plenty. It will be plenty because... You don't want to give somebody 500 pieces of this, 500 pieces. You want them to have a, a small batch of each kind of thing and just like a sample. They're, they're getting a sample. So, I'm going to get it all mixed in and this is just going to be so good. I'm going to put the lid back on it because I want to keep the heat on it so it don't start setting up. But I'm going to pause you guys. Alrighty. I had to pause you guys for a minute. Because I didn't know what I've done with my parchment paper. But I didn't know how long I was going to be gone. So I just let you have a break. So now i got my parchment paper. And man, I hate these little things right there. We're going to take this that parchment paper out. And we're going to, it's got a little thing on here. It shows you how to lift it. We're going to take it off. Put it back in here so that we can pull it back out and get a hold of it. These things are so hard. I may put it back in there upside down. I like to do things the hard way. Okay, I'm teaching y'all how not to do parchment paper. Put it over this way. Now, there we go. And what I do is I'm going to light on to my stove and put this over. I 
I use every available spice. Every available spice when I make this candy. So this over here, let's do two rows. I'm just going to put that there. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, let's put a parchment paper up there. Right there. Okay, I'm going to take the lid off of this. I'm going to move my crock pot over here. I'm turning it off. And I'm going to get me a spoon and a spoon. My wood spoon is just too, it's just too big. You don't want them, you don't want them that big. You want to make them bite size, maybe a little bit, maybe two bite sizes. And right now it's hotter than a firecracker. Now my mind is saying, lick that spoon. But my tongue is saying, girl, you lick that spoon, I'm going to slap you in the next week. And that's the truth. So we ain't going to do that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to unplug my crock pot. And I'm going to move this all a little closer. And I think I'm going to move you guys a little bit closer where you can see. I'm trying to make sure. I have to do like several different things. I have to know, have the stuff where I can work on it. And put you guys where you can see me work on it. I think that's going to work out good. So, about a spoonful, and I'm going to start back here. You won't be able to see the first, but about a tablespoonful, that's about what I'm doing. Got right there, and I'm just putting a glop of it, and that's what I'm doing. And I just continue doing this until I have all this parchment paper filled up. And I tell you, I probably should have started over here, and I just kind of do like that. Start over here. And once it dries, you can reuse this parchment paper while you're making candy. Because it's not, it's not going to stick. It's going to come right off of it. It's just going to pop off of there. And if I make a little mess, I just stick that to it. We're just going to make a little loop. And like I said, we're going to give each family a little taste of everything. And this is my husband's favorite. It's become his favorite. I actually got, I said earlier that I got this recipe off of Facebook. Actually, a patron at the library made us a batch of this. And I asked her, where did she get, where did she get it? She said she got it off of YouTube. And she told me where to find it. And that's how I got off of YouTube. But I actually was able to sample it before. Because she was sweet enough to bring us some. And it was very sweet of her. We have good, I have good patrons at the library where I work. And that's all I'm doing. And I'll just keep spooning and spooning. So I'm not going to have you guys stand there and watch me spoon. We'll come back when this is set up and I'll show you a piece of this candy and what it looks like and what it tastes like. We'll be right back. Okay. We're back and these are done. I've actually had to put another batch in. I was only going to make one batch of them. Okay, you caught me. I had a little chocolate on my lip. But my husband didn't think that it was quite enough. One crock pot made that many. Somebody's already been in here sampling before they set up. But these are set up. I had one over here I can show you. Here's one right here. This is what they look like. And I do a pretty good portion. So see that's a pretty good sized piece of candy. You could do you could do a teaspoon. You can see. They're real creamy. You could do them where they're about this size. I'm going to taste a piece in front of you. Oh, they're creamy. And I look like a, I'm missing my teeth. They're good. Okay. So let's review how we did these. We did one whole sleeve of the vanilla almond bar. One bag of dark chocolate. One bag of milk chocolate or semi-sweet. And one jar of lightly salted nuts. Now I tell you, it does taste good with the salt, salty nuts, the full salt nuts. But I'm trying to watch my salt, so I, I drop down. But if you, that salty sweet is really good. But I hope you guys will try these. And this is day one candy, crock pot candy. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me a like, share, and a subscribe, and a comment. Those are my favorite. You guys have a wonderful, blessed evening. Until next time, I'm Grammy Nene. We'll be back with day two on Monday. Y'all have a wonderful day.